What's up guys, Corey here. We've been doing a ton of plowing the last four weeks. I think I've plowed in four weeks as much as I normally plow in a four month period. We had no snow in November, no snow in December, and then January 13th hit, and it's just literally been eight or nine events, full pushes. It's been good for the business, great revenue. Um, we've just been cranking away. But anyway, so what I want to talk to you about today is snow removal. The different types of snow removal, uh, what type of snow removal do we do, my progression uh, from my business, and how I've progressed from residential into commercial, and now um, I don't do residential anymore. Uh, actually, we are all commercial now. We I'll explain that a little later, but hold on. I gotta put this thing in four-wheel drive. We'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, let's talk about different types of snow removal. A little bit about my story. I started my business uh, doing a residential driveway in my neighborhood. I was charging, I think, 40 bucks to do the driveway. Um, and anyways, I was doing that. As a side gig, I was working as a uh, commercial real estate analyst uh, in the corporate world. And then in 09, when everything tanked, the economy tanked, I lost my job and I said, you know what, I'm just gonna go full-time into lawn care and landscaping. I didn't know anything about landscaping. I never worked for a landscaping company before. I didn't know anything about lawn care. Uh, also didn't know, I mean, honestly, uh, didn't know anything about really business. I mean, I knew business, I knew numbers. I have an accounting background. In computer science background, but I never owned a business, family didn't own a business. So anyways, let's just talk a little bit about my progression. So I started doing residential driveways. At one point I was doing about 80 residential driveways. We then started picking up some smaller commercial accounts, small retail lots, uh, small HOAs. And within, I think this is my third year. So once I hit my sixth year in business, I completely got out of the residential snow removal business. Uh, the reason being, uh, my commercial business grew, so we now do about 25 commercial properties. So we have churches, we have industrial property, we have retail property, we have about uh, 10 to 12 townhome associations. And I posted uh, a video about a week ago, or actually this week, about uh, just showing you guys uh, us plowing uh, a couple of our townhome associations. But anyway, so I said no to residential at, at this point. So it was about three or four years ago. We had just got done plowing a pretty big storm. Uh, it was kind of maybe a two day storm where we go in, we push, we came back, it was blowing. And anyways, what happened was is my residential customers were blowing me up. I think I only had maybe like 30 of them. And they were blowing me up and asked me when I'd be there. And, and I, I, I struggled to find a contractor that could handle my residentials, uh, be consistent. Uh, it was just, it was tough. It was really tough. So anyways, they were asking me where we're at, yada, yada, yada. And uh, anyways, we were still getting everything done. But when I got done with the snowstorm, I looked at the revenue and the revenue I had done, I think it was like, I think out of the 40 or $45,000 we had done in business for that storm, only like 4% of the revenue was from residentials. So it was a very small sliver of my snow revenue, but that 4% of the 4% of my snow revenue created 80% of my stress. And believe it or not, when you get into commercial properties, they are actually a lot easier to do and keep happy than your residential customers. I know it sounds weird, but my largest commercial accounts that will pay sometimes two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000 per snow to push are usually my easiest accounts. So I'm gonna run in, grab a drink. I'll be right back with that thought and finish it out. All right, guys, got my Red Bull, I'm uh, back. So what I was saying is, I think 96% of my income was be, was coming from commercial snow removal. 4% of my income was coming from residentials and those residentials were causing 90% of my headaches and logistics. Uh, so 
I made the decision at that point. This was probably, it took me about six years to get to that point. Uh, from the time I started the business to just now doing all commercial. So let's talk about commercial uh, snow removal. Now there's about four different types of commercial snow removal. You've got retail snow removal. Retail snow removal is gonna be your, uh, your Walmarts, your grocery centers, your strip malls. And uh, we have, we have probably, we have a, a few of those properties uh, unless you're doing big Walmarts and stuff like that, the small strip retail properties are pretty easy to do. Uh, the logistics of them can be difficult at times due to uh, just the fact that different tenants have different opening times and you usually have to have them plowed out by 7 a.m. So if you have a bunch of, uh, of these little retail centers all around town, uh, you're gonna need more trucks to service them and get them out in a timely fashion. Uh, and then the other side of it too, I guess you could consider retail is restaurants. Uh, we plow a handful of Wendy's uh, stores in town. They're pretty easy to take care of. They don't open up till about 10 or 11 in the morning. So we can hit our early ones and then go hit those. Uh, I think we have seven of those. Uh, we also have churches. Now church are, churches are interesting. They're fantastic because you very rarely ever have to worry about getting paid from a church, and they're usually high maintenance. We have a, uh, a Catholic church in town that uh, is an awesome customer. They have, they have a couple acres of parking lot. It's a very large church, and uh, they, pay, uh, they pay really well, they pay on time, and they don't screw around. It's pretty much zero tolerance. So I really like churches. Uh, we have a couple industrial properties. I like the industrial properties because they're they're pretty much low maintenance. They spend money on salt. Uh, they want you to do a good job, but they're not freaking out if you don't get there right away. Uh, they're they're typically more blue collar. Uh, as long as their trucks can get in and out, they're they're great to work with. They're they're easy to work with. Um, so we've got industrial. Then we have uh, homeowners associations. Now, I I would say 50% of my 20, pro well, actually probably 60% of my commercial revenue, snow revenue, comes from homeowners associations. Uh, so the nice thing about homeowners associations, they're usually decent sized accounts. I've got a small association that's anywhere from 12 units to associations that are upwards of 80 to 100 units. Um, the nice thing about them, they're large. They're typically larger, so you can put a skid loader, you can put a truck on them, you can get enough hours. You know, I can have a crew knock out four or five associates. I can have 10 guys, uh, you know, a couple trucks, skid loaders, and shovelers, and knock out, you know, stick a crew there for two hours and knock out association. Average revenue for an association on a snow, on a small 12 to 15 unit one, you might make, a, you might gross revenue or make about $500. Now the bigger ones, the 80 unit ones, once you get into private streets, you get into, you don't have very many push points, uh, you're carrying snow, you're gonna have to get, you're, you're gonna have to have dedicated skid equipment to do it. Uh, like in my other video I, I just posted, um, you can you can rack up a 2,500 to 3,500, sometimes 4,000 dollars pretty easily per push with some of these properties. So. When I first got into snow removal, I thought to myself, man, I don't want those big properties, they're a hassle. As I progressed and got into larger properties, I'm starting to say no to my smaller properties, my smaller commercial, and transition into the larger commercial properties. Now, why is that? It's because they're easier to manage, they're easier to plow. I can go to a site and be there for probably, you know, four or five, six hours and stay on the property, manage the property, make really good money on the property, and I'm not chasing properties all the way around town. As long as I have a, a piece of equipment and crew there working, even if it takes us six, seven, eight hours to get done, the customer knows we're there, the customer knows we are work, We are there working on the property. So, you know, it's like malls, 
high uh, grocery stores, Walmarts. Those are awesome accounts if you can pick them up. You can sit a wheel loader there all season long. They typically will pay you a, a, uh, a regular monthly amount for the season. I know that the grocery stores here in town, I'm in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, they will pay $50,000 a year guaranteed money to push the snow there. So, you know, you guarantee, they pay you 50,000 a year to do your, the salt, the plowing, up to a certain threshold, say 35 inches of snow or 40 inches of snow. After you hit that threshold, then it would roll to an hourly rate. So you're not getting burned in the events that you get a, just a killer year of snow. Now, with that said too, the nice thing, they take, it takes bigger equipment. So on those bigger properties, the bigger grocery stores, the malls, you've got to have skids and you've got to have wheel loaders. Just, you can't plow them with just a truck. There's no way you can handle it. So um, anyway, so those bigger accounts, you can stick one or two really good operators on a grocery store and with two operators running a couple wheel loaders or a wheel loader and a skid can knock those properties out quickly and efficiently and do a good job. And you only need two guys, two guys on the account to come in and you can generate $50,000 in revenue a year. Now, granted guys, you know, you need a salt truck. It's, it's, it's more complicated than that. It's more complicated than that, but I'm just trying to dummy it down. So I personally, uh, from my experiences, from a, from a revenue and a management standpoint, I love commercial business. I love commercial snow removal. You can go out, you can make a good chunk of money, every snow, um, and it just makes sense for how I'm set up. Now with commercial snow removal, the biggest thing that is that you're going to have to do if you're going to get into commercial snow removal is you're going to have to find good subcontractors. I have sub I have about six to seven different crews of subcontractors. It takes us about 40 to sometimes 50 guys of snow to get everything done. That's with my in-house guys and my subcontractors. But if you have good subcontractors, you pay them well you pay them on time and you treat them well and don't jerk them around, they will stay with you and come back year after year. Hold on, I'm getting a phone call, I gotta take this, I'll be back. All right guys, I'm back. So, trying to regain my train of thought of where I was at with commercial versus residential, but anyways, bottom line, uh, commercial, oh, subcontractors. You gotta have some subcontractors. There's not a company in the country that can have a decent sized snow removal operation and cover all of their properties by themselves with their own equipment. So you're gonna have to find some good contractors. And quite frankly, you're gonna have to blow through some crappy contractors to get to some good ones. But once you get a good system down, you get some good contractors, uh, things really smooth out and you can generate some good income from it. Uh, the other thing too about the commercial side is, as you guys get into commercial snow removal, your customers are going to start asking, you know, hey, can you do my, can you do everything for me? Can you do my mowing? Can you do my landscape maintenance? Can you do my snow? And uh, I tell you what, you know, once you can get into those year round customers, they can generate a really, a, a decent amount of revenue at a good profit mark, gross profit margin, um, to, you know, to basically, uh, just, it, it, it just makes sense. And, and for my operation, it makes sense where I'm at, uh, I'm in Des Moines. So there's lots of commercial, uh, business available. I think I live in a, uh, our Des Moines, the MSA is around 500,000 people. And really honestly, 90% of my business is probably within a, uh, is on the west side of town within a population of probably maybe 200,000. So that's kind of how we're set up. But anyways, guys, if you have any questions, have any comments, just leave them below. Appreciate you watching my channel. I'll keep posting some more videos about snow removal, numbers. I'm a big numbers guy. So uh, I truly believe in business that almost every decision you make can be made objectively 
just by looking at the numbers and your gross profit and your expenses and whether you buy a truck or you buy a piece of equipment, if you know your numbers and you know your gross profit, you can literally make decisions within a couple minutes of looking at buying equipment, whether it's snow removal equipment, lawn care equipment, landscaping equipment, stuff like that. You can make those judgment calls very, very quickly. So anyways, uh, appreciate you watching my channel. I'm rambling now, I'll get off. Uh, but thanks for watching. If you got any questions, leave them below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks guys.